So welcome back to another episode of FIFA History. Today we are taking a look at FIFA 18 in 2022. FIFA 18, in terms of reviews, got an 84% from Metacritic, 4 out of 5 from Eurogamer, and a 7 out of 10 from GameSpot. We're going to be taking a look at some of the new features that brought at the time and how it plays in 2022. If you do enjoy FIFA History videos, make sure you leave a like for me, it always helps. And make sure you subscribe for more videos in the series. Today's video is sponsored by Mule Factory. If you want to get some FIFA coins for yourself, check out the link in the description and use my code VAPEXFOOT for a 5% discount. Alright, so let's see what the marketing department came up with. FIFA 18 new gameplay features. In FIFA 18, we're adding new features to bring the players of the world's game to life, making your favorite footballers move and act as they do on the pitch. Same words every year, just said in different ways. Real player motion technology. Like every year, hyper motion. Real player motion technology. The same stuff, I'm telling you. The all-new game-changing animation system. All-new game-changing. Utilizes pose trajectory matching on every frame to deliver the most responsive and fluid gameplay ever. We use new motion capturing techniques to record Real Madrid's Ronaldo and other top players in full flight. Real player motion technology brings that data to life to ensure gameplay accurately represents the reality of football with players feeling and moving just as they do on the pitch. All right, so you got that thing there. I mean, we're not going to watch it, but player personality, another thing that they sort of mention every year, Ronaldo's signature free kick, Sterling's unique turns and Griezmann's technique. You'll see them in FIFA 18 as for the first time ever, Players' real-world motion, size, and attributes inform how they move on the pitch. So I'm sure you guys remember when they captured Ronaldo doing the free kicks. This was the game that brought in Sterling's signature run style, you know, all that kind of stuff. Dribbling overhaul, new dribbling mechanics let you run at defenders with confidence, using defined touches, tighter turns, and more explosive transitions to attack than ever before. Got the Ronaldo heel chop there, motion captured, new crossing control, Whip the ball into the spot, lob it from the byline to the attacker in space, or play the searching cross that finds the run from deep. New crossing controls give you more options from the wing. So yeah, apparently you could cross different. And that's basically it for the gameplay features in FIFA 18. Let's take a look at career mode here. Frostbite powers new features in FIFA 18 career mode. So apparently they introduced interactive transfer negotiations, dynamic cinematic news clips in the menu, custom training presets, and new broadcast overlays, making career mode deeper and more realistic. So interactive transfer negotiations here is basically, let me find the screenshot, this thing here, I think we're zoomed in too much. This thing here where the managers come and um, shake each other's hands and stuff. And of course you've got the contract cinematic as well. And then we've also got this stuff here, which is in like the menus. You've also got the player of the month stuff and training as well. 15 new skill games in FIFA 18. So that was for training. Quick subs, you could do that for the first time. Team styles, it says you'll immediately recognize some of the world's best known tactics on the pitch. Atmospheres, authenticity and regionalization. So region specific atmospheres, pitch side fixtures, stadium specific banners, high definition dynamic crowds and more. La Liga, new broadcast package. So that was the first year for that, I believe. And I think that's basically it. We're not going to look at the other game modes. This is basically like a little rundown before we get into the actual game. All right, so here is the FIFA 18 menus, obviously. The servers are open, so you can still hop into the catalog and unlock those celebrations, the boots, all that kind of stuff. Coins as well. You've got the World Cup DLC, 2018 Russia, and then you've got Ultimate Team there as well. Whatever you play here probably comes up. And then we've also got the Journey, Season 2, I believe, of the Journey. Ultimate Team there, and then we've got Kickoff, Career Mode, Skill Games, Online stuff as well, Pro Club Season Mode, and then your Settings and EA Tracks. Let's take a look at the Practice Arena. We're back in Ronaldo's Backyard. And uh, <laughs> we're playing FIFA 18. And uh, it's a nice little stadium, to be honest. It's better than playing in like a training ground. I always like to play in the stadiums when there's a practice arena. But obviously, my favorite is probably um, the old school ones. There's no features here. You know, you can only do select sides and stuff. But FIFA 14 had a good one. Let's take a look at career mode now. Let's see what it was like. You have these avatars here as your manager. You can customize the track suit, the suit, shirt, and tie. You couldn't really do much with these guys anyway. So I'm glad that they're gone. And then you've also got the pre career settings, got your currency, all that kind of stuff there. Here is your career mode menus. And as you can see there, not much has changed over the years. You've got your tiles there. I think these were new, these things here. And you've also got uh, the squad stuff here and uh, transfer stuff. You've also got the office stuff. No request funds here, they got rid of that. And then there's also the season stuff there. Hasn't really changed much over the years. The only thing that FIFA 18 career mode brought in was obviously the, the news tile things. A bit of training, a bit of skill games, and obviously when you went into uh, the transfer hub, the squad hub to buy and sell players and then do contract negotiations and stuff, you had these cutscenes here, and that was the first time we saw that in the game, but obviously now everyone's used to them by now. Here is a little bit of uh, Season 2 of The Journey. If you remember this, this is the start of it. You're in Brazil, I believe, and you do a game of uh, futsal or volta, whatever you want to call it, 
This was basically Volta before Volta even came out in FIFA 20. So everyone thought, yeah, Volta's coming soon, but it took two years after the journey to um, bring it into the game fully. But EA was already working on this from like FIFA 18. It looks very nice. The graphics look cool, nice court and nice setting as well. I think it's like a favela or something. So it looks pretty cool. And it reminds me of uh, Modern Warfare 2, one of the missions, I think the favela mission or something like that. We're going to be getting another World Cup mode this year, but in FIFA 18, we had the 2018 Russia World Cup DLC. It's not much. There's no qualifying mode and stuff. But you basically do like online ultimate team, online tournaments, kickoff mode, and of course the official tournament. You can even do a custom one as well. I expect that this year we're going to be getting something very similar to this. I don't think EA is going to change the formula too much. But you can see here with this custom mode, you can swap out teams. So you have a selection of non-qualified teams like Italy and stuff. And then you've also got the qualified teams as well, which are already part of the groups. For today's World Cup match, we're going to be doing Italy versus Argentina. I think they had the real life match and uh, Argentina absolutely smashed them. So today we're trying to rewrite history a little bit. And uh, yeah, the Italian team, I don't know, not very convincing in some parts. So with the World Cup stuff, you do get nice presentations and stuff. Of course, it is licensed. So that's why you get all the nice stuff. I think we had all the stadiums as well. So we've got the Italian fans there. Obviously, they won't be turning up to the World Cup this year once again. Only in the video games, I guess. I do remember playing a lot of the World Cup DLC. I always enjoy the World Cup stuff. I remember picking different teams and trying to do the tournaments trying to go all the way with different nations. It's always fun. It always puts you in that World Cup spirit. I do miss the old days where they actually had proper games though, where you had like the story of qualifying and you had like uh, the tournament mode. There were so many different things. Challenge mode as well. It's just not the same anymore. I remember FIFA 14 World Cup had a game. FIFA 10, I believe. FIFA 06. You know, that kind of stuff there. I'm sure some of you guys even bought a copy of the World Cup games yourselves as well. But these days, it's all about the Ultimate Team microtransactions. And uh, offline people just get the basics these days. It's not the same. Maybe we should go for goal here. Would be a nice finish if we can score. It's looking pretty good. Oh my goodness, hits the bar. So we're going to get the VAR check out. Let's see how close this was. Oh, that was a good free kick. So let me know if you liked FIFA 18. If you're still playing FIFA 18, there might be one person out there playing FIFA 18 career mode at the moment. Or even the journey, because it did have the journey. Or even this World Cup DLC. You're trying to get into the World Cup mood. It's still a bit early. So let's see what Argentina can do here. They float it in, and uh, Perez turns, and uh, good save by Buffon. He didn't really know much about that. A lot of power on that effort. Let's see if we can find Immobile here. It's looking pretty good. Immobile with the header. How does he miss? Wow. All right, so I've uh, managed to turn on the game audio. I forgot I left it on mute. Parolo is going to switch it. That's a nice ball over the top. Insigne bringing it forward. Right before half time, can we score? Insigne floats it into Immobile. Got a score here. Beautiful effort. Beautiful goal. Right on half time as well. Finally, the stoppage time works in my favor instead of the scripting. Messi storms forward, full of pace, and we cut it out again. Our defense has been on point here. Could actually start a, another attack here. And we're going to go here with Verdi. Straight to Immobile. No offside, and it's 2 0. Game over. Here's Messi. Brings it forward. Messi in the box, plays it across. Oh, Buffon with the save. What a stop by Buffon. Still got it. I don't know how old he is in this game. Argentina finally decided to show up to work today. They could actually score here. Oh, just over the bar. So that's pretty much it. FIFA 18 in 2022. Let me know what you think. Overall, it was pretty fun to play this World Cup DLC. It's getting me pretty excited for the FIFA 23 version. But we've still got a few months to go before that even comes out. Let me know if you're going to play FIFA 18 once again, if you're still playing it. And uh, let me know what you thought of the game as well.